All right, what's happening, my friends? That's right, my math We're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations by using everybody's favorite formula, the quadratic formula. So when we take a look at this, we got to know what the quadratic formula is. And this thing's long, man. It's, it's really, really, really doozy. So make sure you write the quadratic formula down if you don't already have it memorized. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So a lot of times people will go pop goes weasel to help them remember that part. And if you'll notice in here, there's this little key part. I'm going to kind of separate it here a little bit. You've already got that, you know, x equals negative b over 2a piece, which you should know from maybe previous stuff that perhaps that gives you the x coordinate uh, for the vertex in standard form. And it also gives you the axis of symmetry. So that part is in there. And then we're just going to add this other little piece in here. And the b squared minus 4ac, so this piece right here, that little part underneath the, the radical, underneath the square root, that is called the discriminant. So the discriminant uh, is going to play a part in this formula. So the entire formula, of course, is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that is our formula. One of the things I notice a lot when students write, um, be really careful when you write this because sometimes people just do this and then 2a. And, and that's not correct. You know, that's not, not correct at all. The entire piece is being divided by 2a. The other thing I see students do, which is also incorrect, is then like have that line go over to the other side. And that's not true either. So don't write it like that. Write like a mathematician and be good about all this stuff. So we've got kind of, you know, a couple pieces here. We want to go take a look at that. We are going to do three examples together. That's right, we're going to do three. Um, and then one of the things, whenever we want to use the quadratic formula, the very first thing we're going to have to do is get the equation into standard form. In standard form, that is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to set that equal to zero. All right, so you want to get the equation set equal to zero. And if I look at example one, that's definitely not e set equal to zero. So we got to move that around. And when we do that, when we move that term, that 2x that's on the right, uh, we're going to move that to the other side. And we're going to write it in standard form. So the 3x squared is going to come first. Minus 2x will come second. And then the negative 21 is going to come third. All right, then we're going to get that set equal to zero. Now there's three terms here. There's three terms. So let's kind of review what those terms are. Now the, the x squared term, all right, that is going to be what's called your quadratic term because that is the term that has a degree of two. The bx term, this guy right here, that is going to be a linear term because the degree is just one. We, we're lazy in mathematics. We don't like to write a one for an exponent and we're not going to do that. So uh, the linear term is just going to have an exponent of one, which we don't see. It's invisible. And then the c, that is going to represent a constant. So no variable there just a number, just a number. So the quadratic term, linear term, constant term, all of those are going to be pieces we need to make sure are all on the same side. So we get our pieces here. Now, most people, you know, will kind of think about this. They'll think like, all right, the A value is three, the B value is negative two, and then the C value is negative 21. So depending on your math skills, where you are and everything, some people can write them right above it, others can keep them in their head, others will like to write it on the side. So whatever works for you, you do you. So A is going to be 3, B is going to be negative 2, and then C will be, of course, negative 21. So those are my three values for A, B, and C. And that's after you get it in standard form, you got to identify the three values, A, B, and C. Now, as you go to plug into the formula, depending on where you are, some people like to write the formula out. You don't have to. You just have to apply the formula. And small technical thing, because it's not always X's. In this case, it is an X. So we'll start this out with X equals. Now, whatever the B number is, we're going to take the opposite of that. In this case, our B is negative 2. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive 2. So we're going to have negative B and then plus or minus. Now, the square root of B squared minus 4AC. So our discriminant part. So B squared. So I want you to write negative 2 squared minus 4. The A value is 3. And the C value is negative 21. Then put the square root around all of that nice and neat. And then put your little division bar underneath all that with 2 times our A value is 3. So what I want you to do, the very first thing you want to do is take your time and substitute your values correctly. Because that will earn you a point. That will earn you a point. 
Now, the rest of it is going to be arithmetic. So you'll use a calculator or some other device to calculate whatever the discriminant is. So the value of the discriminant, this piece right here, you would do that using a calculator. So you'll go ahead, you'll pull up your calculator and you'll type those values in and be really careful. You know, make sure you put parentheses around the negative two squared, uh, and then the minus four, and then the three, and then, and then the negative 21. So make sure your notation is good because that will give us a value of 256. Now, on the other hand, if we were to forget the parentheses around that, watch what happens here. So if we were to type in, you know, negative two, and then just square that, and then minus four, and then just do times three times negative 21. So watch what happens here because we forgot the parentheses. And the, and the key piece is around that very first one, um, that negative two being squared. This calculator uh, does not do that correctly. It does what you tell it to do, and you told it to square two first, and then do the opposite of that. So it's very critical that you do negative two uh, in parentheses around there. So I'll just take your time, put those in, so it looks like the very first line, and you end up with negative 256. So our discriminant, that value is gonna be negative 256. So our next line on here, we'd have x equals two plus or minus the square root of 256. All of that over six. Now 256 is pretty cool, and again, here's where you wanna check some things. So if we did the square root of 256, and this is one at this level, you probably should have memorized, square root of 256, that value will actually be an integer. Whole number, that's right, number 16 is what that is. If you would have gotten a decimal, then we'd have to simplify that if we needed to, if it wasn't a prime number. So we'll get this, and then you'll have uh, x equals two plus or minus 16 over six. Now from here, we're gonna break this apart into two solutions, because that's what that plus or minus means. It means we have two solutions on here. So we would have x equals two plus 16 over six, whatever that answer gives us. And then we'd have x equals two minus 16 over six. So when we do that, two plus 16 is 18. Uh, so we'd have 18 over six. And then that, of course, we know that would reduce down all the way to three. So that's one of my answers. And then our other answer, we would do two minus 16, and that gives us negative 14 over six. And then we would get a value, because we want to reduce that, negative seven over three. So these are my two solutions, two solutions to this quadratic equation. All right, now, if this were a quiz, let's talk points here. You get that first point, right, just for substituting in correctly. You get that first point for substituting in correctly. You get your second point for, um, showing the work. So you gotta show your work. You can't just go all the way right to the answer because nobody does that. Mm -mm, nope, nope, nope. Make sure you show your work. And then each one of your answers, you get a point for those two guys. So that'd be about four points. That'd be about four points for all that one. Now let's take a look at number two. Uh, two is a little bit different, right? Because we have two terms on the right. But again, we wanna get that quadratic term, linear term, and constant term. We got everything on the same side. And since our uh, 2x squared, since our quadratic term is already positive, we're gonna take this other side, this one minus nine x, we're gonna move that over to the other side. So when we do that and write it in standard form, we'll get two x squared plus nine x minus one equals zero. Now from here, again, our ABCs, so our A value is two, our B value is nine, and our C value is negative one. And some people, what they like to do, you know, and again, this just kind of depends, you could say, well, you know, I want to do the opposite of B, and then they would put this in here, and then that way it helps them with their formula when they when they go ahead and substitute that. So if you want to do that, that's fine, you know, no big deal there. But you get that first point. So these are x's again, so you'd write x equals negative b, which would be negative nine plus or minus. So our b value squared would be nine squared minus four, and then the a value is two, and the c value is negative one. So you put all that together, a nice little square root around that divided by, and then two times our A value, which is two. And again, take your time, do your arithmetic on that. Uh, when you end up doing your arithmetic correctly, you'll get X has a value of negative nine plus or minus. So now you can see from this one, we end up with a value of 89, we get 89. So again, make sure you put the parentheses around you know, your terms and to indicate you're multiplying correctly when you put that in your calculator. Now, sometimes you may get an error alert. And what I see happen sometimes is when people go to put their uh, 
when they're they're typing in where this negative one is, they might hit the subtract key by mistake. And if that were to happen, uh, then that what happens on that, if you hit the subtract key instead, so watch what happens here. If you hit the subtract key by mistake, you'll get this what error syntax. Because yeah, that's the wrong syntax, bro. It's not a subtract key, it's a negative. All right, so make sure you use the right sign or right key in there, and I'll give you the correct value of 89. All right, so we end up with square root 89, and 89 happens to be a prime number. So two times two is four. So on this one, we will get negative nine plus or minus the square root of 89, all that over four. So again, you get one point for doing substituting, and then um, you know two points for your answer. You have the plus or minus. And if you wanted to write that separately, you could, because sometimes you might see it like that. You may see the answer written as x equals negative nine plus square root of 89 over four, and x equals negative nine minus the square root of 89 over four. So you could see it in either one of those two formats uh, like that. Sometimes you might see it like this as well. You might see uh, braces around that with each one of those listed individually. So again, it kind of depends on the textbook or the source that is being utilized or how your teacher may want the answer. All right, so make sure you check with them to make sure you're writing your mathematics correctly uh, the way your instructor wants you to do that. All right, so that's one and two. Now let's take a look at number three. Number three, we're gonna look at a little imaginary solutions. And actually, let's go through this guy together. We already know our ABCs on this one, so A is gonna have a value of three, B is gonna have a value of four, and C is gonna have a value of 11. So again, we'll take our time. These are X's again, so we'll do X equals negative B, so that'd be minus four, plus or minus, and then B squared, so four squared minus four times the A value is three, and the C value is 11 square root around that part all over two times three. So that would be our equation to start out with. That would be our equation to start out with. Now again, when we go to find the discriminant part uh, of negative four plus or minus, now four squared is 16, and then we end up with four times three times 11, that's 12. So when we do that, that calculation, so let's go ahead and do that piece in there. So. Um, Negative four squared, so let's see, let me try and figure out some way to hide that a little bit or just move that over on the side so we can do all this. So again, parentheses around that, so uh, we got negative four and then squared minus four, then parentheses, we got our three, and then another set of parentheses, then 11. So when we do all that calculation, uh, we'll end up with a nice little value of negative 116. Ooh, gross, so negative 116. So our discriminant in this case is a negative value. So multiplying that together, we end up with a negative 116 for our discriminant. And on the bottom, our denominator, we just get six. Now there's a couple things about our discriminant being negative, right? So we wanna take our time and look at that value, negative discriminant. Um, so that's gonna mean a couple of things. The very first thing we wanna do is we know when we have a negative right here, you're gonna take out an I. So and that is going to be one of the things that we're going to do because i is going to mean the imaginary root because you can't take the uh, square root of a negative number without using an i because that's imaginary so uh you know step by step you know if you want to kind of think about it most people will skip this so we'll go negative four plus or minus i and then square root 116 all of that over six now 116 does, can be simplified. 116 can be simplified. So we need to do that. We need to do that. Now, uh, there is perfect square factor of 116. So what I like to do is kind of think about it. Maybe just do some guess and check, some um, trial and error. Some people like to use what they call the birthday cake method. And actually, who doesn't like cake? So well, let's go ahead and, and show some cake here. So if I start out with 116, so we're gonna do the birthday cake method. And I know that's even, so I'm gonna divide that by two. 116 divided by two gives me 58. Well, that's another even number. So I can divide that by two, in which case I get 29. Now, 29 is a prime number. So what you would do, you know, some people do this. They'll say, okay, I'll divide it by 29. I'll put one on top, and one is your candle. All right, so any numbers that are on the left side of what we just did, every pair of those is going to make one of that number. So in this case, you know, that would come out. Uh, and that would give us one, two. So our answer, we, it would end up looking like this. We'd have x equals negative four plus or minus. Now we have a pair of twos, so we'd have a two there. Don't forget the i, because a two would go in front of the i. 
And then the number that's left, so this piece right here, this 29, that doesn't have anything, so that's gonna go underneath the radical, and so we'd have square root of 29. All of that over, six. Now there's one more step on this one, because we can do a little bit more simplifying, and what you wanna do is analyze the denominator with each of the terms that are not underneath the square root. So there's a number that goes into negative four, two, and six, and that number, of course, is two, so you divide each one of those by two, in which case you'd get negative two, plus or minus, and then you're just left with regular i, square root of 29, all over three. So that'd be your final answer there for that problem. Negative two, plus or minus, i square root 29 over three, because this one, you end up with an imaginary solution. And we gotta do a little bit of reducing. So again, on this one, you know, because we got a little bit more going on here, you get one point for substituting in. Um, you know, you get two points there for the answer, of course, because you gotta have the plus or the minus, common mistake, people don't do that. And then make sure that you show your work, take your time, show your work uh, to do that. And your work, notice, you know, equal signs, nice, neat, lined up. Uh, everything's in a row, uh, it's not all over the place, and I want you to really work on concentrating on getting your mathematical writing and notation down to look solid. All right, boys and girls, thank you for watching this one. I'll catch up with you later, my friends. Peace out, Cub Scouts.